Hi, and welcome back to Leslie's Lab. In a previous episode, we took a look at an LSI nitrogen laser that I scored on eBay rather cheaply. Uh, recently, I also scored this. Uh, this is an LSI dye laser uh, that's designed to be used with nitrogen lasers. So let's stick this on the bench and take a look. So this is the LSI dye laser that I picked up off eBay uh, recently. Uh, I think I paid a little bit over the odds for this, but certainly not what it was worth. Uh, this was actually listed as a laser attenuator because it has the word beam attenuator on the top there. Uh, so we'll have a look. We've got um, a back plate here with a hole um, where we, we, we pump uh, with the nitrogen laser. That's, that's the input essentially. And if we rotate the assembly here, uh, we've got the front. So we've got the beam attenuator itself, which is just a plastic slide uh, that blocks the beam and we can sort of see uh, into the cavity there. We've got a nice warning label on the front and it actually does state um, 400 to 800 nanometers, uh, half a milliwatt max, uh, class 3B because peak power is very, very high. On the top we've got a, it's actually a lid, uh, and this is where you would put the curvette. And then most importantly for, for this dial edge, it's actually got a micrometer uh, head where we can adjust the angle of the grating and thus change the wavelength. The really good thing about this is it's actually calibrated in nanometers. Uh, so if you set it to five, it's essentially 500 nanometers. Uh, and if we uh, you know, screw, screw the micrometer head, we're up to six, so that would be 600 nanometers. So we've got you know, 400 to uh, 800 nanometers, essentially, uh, that we can tune all the way through. So this is uh, really, really useful uh, in terms of uh, you know, setting up dye lasers to the correct wavelength. Uh, obviously, I'll have to calibrate this at some point uh, so I suppose a future project will be to build um, a, a spectrometer so that um, I can check what, what wavelength is actually being emitted. Uh, we'll take the screws out here and have a look. There's only two, but it's a bit of a pig to get the, to get the case off. Uh, we have to tilt things at odd angles. It would help if I removed the lid there. Uh, and there's not much to it, you know, if you've checked, up my, checked out my other videos, um, you'll have seen a homemade dye laser and this is it's essentially got in here uh, exactly what I built, more or less, apart from the micrometer head. So we have to tilt this back and it's a bit of a squeeze. We have to push the attenuator down at some point. There we go. And so here's the guts of it, essentially. Uh, we'll take a look from the top. We've got the grating assembly here that contains a diffraction grating so that we can uh, tune the output. We've got uh, an optical mount here that contains a cylindrical quartz lens to focus the nitrogen laser uh, beam into a thin line on the curvette. We've got a really, really nicely machined uh, curvette holder here. Um, it's a real precision job. It's a lot, uh, it's a lot better than what I created for my homemade dye laser. Uh, it, and it's got a, a little spring clip in the bottom and it really does hold things perfectly every time. It holds the curvettes perfectly every time. We've got the uh, output coupler mirror mount there and then we've just simply got a turning mirror to, so that the beam connects it out the front. That's it. Uh, couldn't, couldn't be any simpler. If I grab a curvette real quick, we can put one in the top of the uh, assembly. Um, there's little grooves that this thing fits into and just nice as you like in perfectly um, every single time. So, you know, really, really nice piece of kit. Uh, mirrors were out of alignment when I got this, but you know, it, it had traveled from the United States. So it comes as no surprise. So I spent a bit of time tweaking this and setting it up. Uh, the diffraction grating itself is sort of tucked away um, in the assembly here. And if you've never seen a diffraction grating before, I've got one here. This is a 300 lines per millimeter diffraction grating. I'll see if I can catch the light. You should be able to see colors flash in the camera. I think there's a flash of green just there. It's very difficult to get a, trying to catch the camera light with it. I'll see if we can, see if we can get a better image there. I'll come right up to the, up to the camera, see if the autofocus will pick it up and we'll try and tilt it from side to side. And you can see the spectrum being reflected in there. So we've got a flash of blue and a flash of green, flash of red. Um, and this is, you know, essentially what's mounted in the, in the diffraction grating housing in here. Uh, the grating itself is 2,400 lines per millimeter. Uh, I actually managed to get something uh, looking like a manual uh, for this dye laser, uh, you know, so we can get some, some basic specifications on it. So that's it. Dead, dead simple. 
Uh, I think I paid about £150 for this, uh, but you know, given given the optics that's in it and the and the robust construction and the and the fact that I can precisely now adjust uh, wavelength on here, um, you know, a pretty good bargain. These probably would have cost thousands new, uh, even for you know th these will be runs of maybe a few hundred or maybe a few thousand units, and um, so they'll have charged a pretty penny for them. So a really really nice dye laser. Um, we'll hook this up to the nitrogen laser in a minute. So. Uh, if you check out one of my, uh, my previous videos, I've done a video on a Laser Science Incorporated uh, VSL uh, 337 nitrogen laser. Uh, when I did those videos, I remarked that the output was particularly poor. At the same time, as I ordered this, I managed to acquire um, a plasma cartridge. This is actually the old one out of the nitrogen laser now. Um, simply replaced it um, with another old one. It's a, it's a piece of old stock. I don't even think the replacement I put in was particularly new, uh, but the output is certainly much, much higher. Uh, this thing, I'm going to break it down for parts. Um, you know, we, we've got a, a couple of cables on the back here. We've got a ground and we've got the trigger and we've got the high voltage. Um, inside these, if you check out my other video, there's the laser plasma tube itself. Um, which I intend to cut the seal open on and try and uh, fill with my own uh, own gas mixes, so that'd be kind of cool. High voltage capacitors, spark gap, other bits and pieces in here that are pretty useful. So, like I said, this will get stripped uh, and turned into yet another nitrogen laser at a later date. Um, the beam out of this dye laser diverges just as it does with my homemade ones. Uh, this is to be expected and the beam quality is not fantastic. Uh, there's a couple of small threaded holes on the front of the assembly here, so I built a, a small collimation lens assembly that I can just mount on the front there to get a nice tight beam. So even across the room, you know, six, seven feet or so, we can end up with quite a reasonably sized spot. So I have the nitrogen laser set up here. Uh, as I said before, I've replaced the cartridge in this so the output is much, much better. Um, before, when I tried this, it would barely threshold um, a dye cell containing fluorescein. I mean, it would laser the dyes like Rhodamine 6G, um, you know, generally very efficient dyes, but it wasn't so, wasn't so good at pumping others. Uh, we're feeding it a four hertz uh, signal from a function generator here uh, with a pulse width of a millisecond, which is what this requires. And we've just sat the dye laser uh, in front of it and we can see on the uh, target here uh, flashing away. So if we turn up the pulse rate a bit, uh, we've got our output there. Uh, running at about 13 hertz in this case. Um, once again, this is tunable. I'll try and get this in frame. I'll come over the top there. So we're about green there, I would say. And then if we keep turning, we'll go, you know, sort of uh, turquoise and then blue. And then into the violet, which is kind of nice. So it's really, it was really nice adjusting it this way. It's very, very, very precise. I mean, you could, you could probably adjust this to within uh, three or four nanometers or so. So pretty nice. I don't know how well the colors will render on the camera there, but we're green there and then turquoise and then blue and then well into the violet. Again, if we want to change a dye in this, just like we did with a homemade dye laser, we'll just switch that off. We can just pop the cavette out and I'll replace it with Rhodamine uh, 6G. Let's make sure it's the right way around. Um, obviously, when we fire it up, there'll be no output because it's well out of tune. Uh, so we'll need to screw this thing out to around about 690 odd nanometers or so until eventually, there we go. So we've got our uh, laser output now it's kind of a yellow orange so it's a very sort of bright orange and we can tune it almost to red so it's looking quite red now there we go so you know the tuning range of rhodamine 6g is a little bit short and um, it's not as impressive as as the other dye there that was um seven day ethyl amino four methyl kumarin uh, which I showed last time in one of my previous videos. But really, really neat. Pretty cool. And obviously, because it's got a new plasma cartridge now, we can rack this right up to about 20 hertz and um, it will quite happily 
Oh, perhaps not with roll domain. We'll turn it down just a hair, we'll maybe get 17. There are 17 hertz will do. We can still get reasonable reasonable output. Look, the spot almost looks continuous at this point. It's not so far off. I mean you can see you can see the flicker, but pretty reasonable. Uh, if we direct it against the wall, I've got a, a small mirror on a mount here. Let's see if we can point it at the wall there. You can see the spot um, diverges quite significantly. You should be able to see it in amongst the clutter at the back there on the wall. I might be able to see the colour change better. So it's, it's quite obviously red now the spot's expanded that, uh, that large. And then we can go up through orange. Um, almost to yellow but not quite there. And again if we try the other die. And you can you know you can just pull the cells out while it's running it won't harm the thing at all it's uh, it's not a problem we'll need to screw all the way back down to about green there i don't know how well that'll show up on the camera it's quite dim and then through blue and violet uh, again as i've said before if we want to uh, if we want to tighten up that beam uh, into something a little bit nicer we can do so let's do that now we'll take the curvettes out uh, I'll go and grab the screwdriver and that lens mount I built. So we can just upend this thing real quick. This was just made out of junk. Uh, the, the, lens the lens housing was made out of junk. A little bit of aluminium that I cut into a square and drilled a hole in. Uh, there's a brass fitting that came from something, I'm not sure what. Uh, it just so happened it was the right diameter to mount a lens in the front of. So that's it. Uh, we'll need to line it back up with the nitrogen laser, but that's not difficult at all. It's very trivial. We can just fire the thing up and move backwards and forwards till we get the brightest spot, which is about there. So now we've got a very, very tight uh, spot on our target that we can change the colour of. And again, if we reflect on the back wall now, obviously we'll still have a, um, a nice tight spot. So there's the green spot in the background. I'll put it in a bit of shade there and see if we can See if we can see it on the camera. Obviously, this, this setup isn't as uh, isn't as powerful as the the homemade TA nitrogen lasers, uh, but it'll certainly do the job. Let's put a proper proper white target there, and we can see it. That's better. Yeah, so pretty cool. Uh, once again, because this has a new cartridge, I can now more efficiently pump uh, dyes with the homemade laser. So we'll just pop these out and set that off to one side. I'll just park it on there. Um, this is my homemade dye laser. If you haven't seen the videos with the homemade dye lasers in, you should definitely check these out. Um, the dye I've got in here is uh, sodium fluorescine, uh, which just happens to laser in the yellow. So if you want a yellow laser, uh, build a dye laser. So there's a wonderful um, little yellow spot. There's my output there uh, which is kind of fantastic to see um, again it's tunable but only within um, sort of narrow tuning range so you know from yellow to orange-ish almost yeah we can get we can get into the orange you know it sort of overlaps the tuning curve for rhodamine 6g a bit um, but quite a bright yellow spot in any case Thanks for watching this episode of Leslie's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.